Hey everybody, welcome back to the first tree. I am Faith the Flaming Flamingo. Thanks for joining me. So I had some technical difficulties. <laughs> um, I tried to record the second episode, I think it was last week, and it recorded, but somehow my mic was turned off in the program. So it looked like it was working just fine. But it, when I went back to, to check it, it wasn't working at all. So I had to record everything all over again. So this is, this is the second attempt. So welcome. <laughs> um, one good thing is that I do know, if I can remember right, um, for the most part, I know where I need to go so it won't be me looking for these blasted rocks like I I was doing the first time around. I looked for 20 minutes and I still don't know how to activate them. And I'll show you just in a minute. This rock over here. There's three of them to be found. Do I hold it? Yep, but see, I'm doing that. Do I have to be facing a certain way? See, I, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't want you to know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess I have to double jump as soon as I jump. Okay. Anyway, I hope every everybody's doing well. Kind of had... A long weekend. It's not even the weekend. Today is a Wednesday and I still feel... I've been asking my mom every day what day it is. Because it feels... I don't know what it feels like. It just doesn't feel like... Um, like the right day. I think I'm going the right way, by the way. So in order to record this again, I actually had to um, start off... Yeah, I'm going the right way. Um, I, I had to start from the beginning again and play through again. So... That was a little redundant, if you ask me. Because it was, you know, just the first 20 minutes and there's there wasn't really anything happening hey it's a, what, a guitar and, a, and an amp I was trying to think if it was a, a bass an electric I don't I don't really know the different types <laughs> My uh, my older brother is a musician. Um, he's in, I think he's in. He, I know he's in one band with a group of guys that he grew up with, and and uh, uh, they play some really good music. Um, and then he's in one or two other jazz bands as well. And he also teaches music at at a at a school as well. And so I'm kind of laughing because if he ever sees this, I'm sure Drew is going to be like, Oh, that's a so-and-so, you know, <laughs> like know exactly what it is, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You can tell me later if, if you're watching. I think this other rock is down here, if I remember right. So there was one... Yeah, it's down here. Um... There was one where we first started off in this episode, but what it's going to do is unlock an area that was right in front of the one that was there when we first started. So I might as well go around. Haha! -ha. I found it! 
Um, I might as well just go around and and save some time. Can you activate this, please? I still don't know which way. <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm activating it. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Um, okay, so now the trick is figuring out how to get out of here. Maybe this way? This is this is why I get lost so easy. Cause I don't remember directions. Uh Alright, well here's a sparkle. We need these for something, right? I hope we do. Oh look. More grass. Hopefully this is just a way to get out of here anyway. right. At least this time around I was right. When I recorded or tried to record this before I got like I was I, I know for sure it was at least 20 minutes of me searching around for these dumb rocks and, and then trying to figure out how to activate it too. I mean I, I spent Five minutes, I think like at least three to five solid mi minutes of me just trying to figure out how to friggin activate it and okay I think this is where hopefully that if you see that light in the sky like God shining down on it <laughs> I think that's where the rock is um anyway and it was like 20 minutes had gone by and all I had done was search for these these blasted rocks and so I'm like okay I think I'm going to not upload this because it's not going to be entertaining at all I found my way back even at my most distant at the times when I detested him the most he kept reaching out for a year straight, he asked me every week when we were going camping. I thought he was just dense. Eventually, to shut him up, I agreed. We carried out the worn lawn chairs from the garage and set up a cinder block campfire at the site we'd always used behind the house. We walked down the mountain path, talking in the warm sunshine we only got a couple months of the year. Those three obsidian rocks shimmered alongside the shore almost like sparklers pressed against a dark window. I'll never forget that wet stone on my feet, or how those massive mountains looked even bigger in the lake's reflection. I felt small, but grateful. As the sun set, my dad found something I hadn't seen for a long time, the tree where I'd made my first carving when I was six. I hadn't even carved it. My dad had helped me, but I still called it my tree. Something about seeing my name there made me open up, and we talked about everything that night in that old camouflage tent. I told him how much I loved sketching and design, and how it would be a dream to study architecture in Seattle. I told him how hey, I didn't Seattle. get along with my friends much anymore, but that I didn't mind being alone. He told me he was there for me, and he joked that if all he had to do was write my name on a tree to finally get me to talk, he would have left me carved logs with novels on them in front of my room every morning. <laughs> I don't know why it took me that long to realize it, but it was then I knew how much he had sacrificed for me. Okay. Can I activate this now? 
Maybe. Ma maybe. No, really. Can I? stood nearby, unfazed, like nothing was wrong. No, not another My one. My dad is dead, and he's never coming back, Rachel. I can tell you these stories, but I can never reminisce with him again. He can never hold a grandchild that we'll probably never be able to have. I can never talk to him again, and I'll never be able to say I'm sorry for everything. I'm really thankful that there's no fall damage. Lately, I've been playing a lot of Planet Coaster. Um, I've thought about streaming that, but my skills in building with Planet Coaster are near nowhere as good as Planet Zoo. And with Planet Zoo, I think I feel like there's a lot more entertaining stuff that happens, like with the animals and um, you know, just like the vets that don't want to do their job and things like that <laughs> like it just seems like i don't know more entertaining to watch um but if anyone's interested you can leave me a comment and i might stream i don't know maybe a challenge mode or something like that or maybe maybe a sandbox where i don't have to worry about um like how much everything is right now i can't like i i, I like challenge mode because you get you know, a set amount that you start off in, and um, you don't get to do everything that you want. I, I like a challenge, um, as far as games anyway. <laughs> um, and and then, like, throughout, you get, like, these little tasks that you have to do in order to win money, which is good. Um, I like that part of it, too. Click the wrong button. Hello. I, to <laughs> I just can't talk about this anymore. Good night. So right now I can't stay excuse me, in the um, in the positive as far as my um, my cash is concerned. Um so it's not to me, you know, watching that be played, it, it just isn't that fun because I can't really do anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I could maybe start off in, in Sandbox. I think Sandbox allows you to, like, adjust. Like, you don't have to have unlimited. You could, you could start off with more money, maybe. Uh, let me remember what to do here. So that may be a, 
a thing I could do too. Joseph, you can't go to sleep feeling like this. I'm sorry for everything, and I know you need space, but I'm here for you. Don't worry about it. You don't need to feel so lost. I think this is so pretty though. Joseph, have I ever told you what my mother was like? Oh, there. Okay. You know what it's like not to have a mom at home. I'm sure you guys. And you know how hard Girl. having my child is. Origami cranes. What helped me was watching the birds in the morning before the school bus came. <laughs> I thought that my mother was one of those birds. And it made me want to be free like her. My mom taught me how to fold origami cranes while she was in the hospital. So I told myself I would fold one every day until I could fly myself. I think we both have always loved animals. And for me, that love started with a dog. Sometimes this Rottweiler would come up to our property line and wait at the fence for me, but only once in a while. I was sure to check every day immediately after school, and it usually ended in disappointment. I would even steal money from my passed out dad just so I could buy these off-brand dog biscuits. Even when she did stop by, she never went beyond the fence. Why was she so scared? I think my dad was the opposite of your dad in almost every way, except he was in the military as well. He coped with alcohol of every kind. The trailer started falling apart, he got angry, and I withdrew. More and more I became the weird quiet kid who made lots of origami birds and carried dog biscuits around. I think we were pretty similar when it came to being the weird kids. And that same sincerity in college was one of the reasons I was so drawn to you. Life got worse and worse. And at one point, I really didn't think I could survive another day with my soul still intact. I had no real friends, let alone neighbors, since we lived in the middle of nowhere. I should have talked to my teacher, but I was scared what he would do if he found out. As I waited for the school bus one morning, I walked around until I found something in an abandoned shed. Something I can't put into words. I summoned courage I didn't know I had, and I broke into my dad's room and found the key to the shed where he had locked my bike. I'll never forget that feeling. The wind rushing by my ears as the sun rose over fields of wheat. I was flying for the first time. I biked as far as my legs could take me until I found a house that felt friendly and that felt like home. Those strangers helped me in so many ways. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have found my foster family. And if it wasn't for my parents, I wouldn't have met you. You have strength, Joseph, and you're not as alone as you think. This area It's all just so, so beautiful. Just waiting for life to happen. It's like having the home I always wanted is cursed out of my reach. The thought of being a parent myself. How could I do that when I couldn't even be a good son? I'm sorry. I know what you're saying. I just don't know how things will work out. These quiet hours will turn into years. And we'll wonder which roads pass this way. Look by. at all the deer and the And we'll forge a new road together. Oh, so cute. Besides, I discovered for myself that one fateful morning where any hopeful road leads to. There may be thorns in this, but it always leads to the same thing. Ah, what's hi. That? <laughs> we didn't do that last time. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're part of my family, Rachel. Hi. And I'm glad you're part of mine. That's just so pretty. I really don't... What? <laughs> I really love the artistic style in this game.
Alright, well guys, I think we're gonna call this episode two. Thank you for joining me. I hope uh, to see you in the next episode. Hopefully this turns out okay, because last time it did not. But I think we're good. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope everybody has a great day. Bye-bye.